Hi, I'm Martin Zabłocki, MLOps architect at Getting Data. Today I will show you how to deploy large language models in your own private Kubernetes cluster in just five simple steps. Let's go! This video is a follow-up to blog post we released in July, where I showed you how you can deploy large language models using TGI. Back in July, I've deployed Falcon large language model using Hugging Face text generation inference, but a lot changed since July and, for example, TGI license has changed to be more restrictive and less open source. And obviously the leaderboard of open source language models changes every day. Right now, one of the best models in open source is Mistral, so I will deploy that one today. Besides TGI used before, we have new players in the area of LLM deployment frameworks such as OpenLLM from BentoML or VLLM that I will be using today. VLLM is one of the fastest and also the most open source ones. It has Apache 2.0 license, so you can use it on a, both in your private and commercial projects. In this tutorial, I will guide you through the deployment that is shown on a diagram that you can see right now. Keep in mind that we are using Kubernetes deployment, so no matter whether you are running Azure or AWS or GCP or even your own on-premise environment, this tutorial will most likely apply to you because I'm using mostly the standard Kubernetes resources without anything related strictly to Google Cloud Platform. For example, in the diagram you can see I'm using GCS, but it can be as well as free or Azure Blob Storage and other stuff like persistent volumes, uh, deployment services and bad jobs are obviously available in all Kubernetes installations. So the question is how it will work, right? So uh, why do we have GCS and PVC and some deployments? So the idea here is to give you a scalable solution, so if you want to deploy your large language models in your private cluster. At some point you will most likely need to scale up the deployment. Initially it will be one replica, but as your usage grows and your customer base grows, you will need to serve more and more traffic, so you will need to scale up the deployment. And while every container that will run your large language models needs to have the access to the actual model files, to the model weights. This is why the GCS and PVC uh, comes into, into light here. First, we'll download the model from Hugging Face Hub into GCS in order to prevent any external dependency on some third-party server for your installation. Then we'll initialize uh, volume in Kubernetes and this volume will contain all of the model files. The idea here is different from the one that I've shown you in the blog where every time a new container was created, I downloaded model files from GCS. It's not as performant as you might expect because in that configuration you always need to uh, rely on the networking between your cluster and blob storage. While in the new configuration that I will show you today in this tutorial, you will be able to uh, initialize the persistent volume once and then just attach this volume uh, to all of the deployments that uh, will serve your large language model. When you are using volumes in Kubernetes, make sure that you initialize separate volumes in each zone that you plan to run your deployments in because if you use simple volumes such as the ones that I am using today, they are usually bound to a specific zone in the region that you have your Kubernetes cluster. And for example, if you scale up to a different zone, then the volumes will not be accessible. So just make sure that you are either using multiple volumes for each of the zone that you, your Kubernetes cluster is running in, or that you are running something like EFS that is a regional storage. Step one, download the model from Hugging Face. First thing that you need to do is to download the model from Hugging Face. So just open the Hugging Face hub with the model tab and just find the model that you want to deploy. I will be using Mistral today, the 7B Instruct 0.2 version. You can choose the model that you want to. Just make sure that the GPU that you attach to your Kubernetes cluster will be sufficient to handle this model. The fastest way to download the model is to click on the files tab and download all of the files that are listed here. Keep in mind that, for example, in Mistral model, it has both weights in the safe tensors format and in the 
a pickle format for PyTorch, you only need one of them. I will be using Save Tensors today. So download those files and copy them over to GCS or S3 or Azure Blob Storage, whatever cloud you are using, using your favorite command line tool or whatever tool you, you will select for that. Uh, just a side note, make sure that the bucket in S3 or GCS or or storage container in Azure that you will you are using is in the same region that you are running your Kubernetes to basically have faster file transfer speeds. As you can see on the screen right now, I've put my Mistral model files on the GCS and I have this path. I am ready to go to the next step, which will be to initialize the volume that will store those files. So the first thing that I did is to create a storage class for my persistent volume. Two important things to note here. The first one is the reclaim policy. You need, you want to retain those models and retain the volumes that will be provisioned with this class, because whenever you encounter some crash in your Kubernetes cluster, you want this model files to be persisted, so you'll not have to care about reprovisioning the volume every time. And the next thing is the allowed topologies key. It's quite unusual, but due to the recent shortages of GPUs between different regions in different clouds, uh, you need to make sure that you actually will get one of the GPUs that are available there. So the quotas also matter, but also the availability of GPUs is important. So, so before deployment, make sure that you are running both in a region and in the zone that gives you the GPUs you want to. So in order to create the storage class, you just need to run kubectl apply with this file. I already did that and we can check that it was created. Step two, persistent volume. Next thing is to create persistent volume and um, I will be using persistent volume claim for that. Make sure that you create it with access read write once. Also make sure that you use the same storage class that you created before. And also make sure that the amount of storage that you assign to the volume is sufficient to fit your your selected model. And now it's just a matter of running kubectl apply and we'll see the message that the volume was already created. Copy the model files from blob storage into persistent volume. Make sure that you provide the correct node selector. I am running my workloads in Europe West 4 in the zone C. And here one and only container that I am running in this job is the gcloud sdk if you are running for example aws you will most likely use aws cli container and something similar for azure 2 and the only command that i'm invoking here is to just copy over the model files that you've seen in the gcs in the deployment section in in the deployment folder mistral instruct to local path slash model and local path slash model is actually my volume so when we scroll down to the volume mounts, here you can see that I am attaching existing volume to my job and that I'm mounting this volume under slash model. And make sure to assign the resources to the amount that your tool requires. Okay, once you create this manifest, just run kubectl create and now in volume and it will create a batch job in your Kubernetes cluster that will invoke this command and it will copy over the model files. You can use kubectl get jobs to see whether your job is running. As you can see, I've already run one of the jobs and the second one is still pending. So let's wait a little bit for that. Step number four, deploy the LLM using VLLM. The most important step in this tutorial is to actually do the deployment. And for that, I've created a deployment in Kubernetes. Here you can see that I'm using one replica for the tutorial purposes. But uh, if you are running this in a production environment, you will either start with multiple replicas from the very beginning or attach horizontal pod autoscaler or some external uh, autoscaling tools such, such as uh, Kubernetes even driven autoscaler, KIDA, to scale your deployment based on the load that you have in your system. The next important section in the deployment is the node selector. Here uh, I'm using GCP with GKE Autopilot. That's why I'm using the topology selector so that my deployment goes into Europe West 4 in the zone C. And the same principle applies, for example, if you are using AWS on Azure, 
you can use either node selectors or some other scheduling mechanism to point your deployments into the, for example, node groups or node pools that are providing your cluster with the access to GPUs. And here as an example, I am selecting node pools that have NVIDIA L4 attached and this GPU is good enough to handle Mistral 7B model in the 16 point precision. The next important bit is the volumes. Here I am attaching the volume that I've created before, Mistral 7B that was initialized uh, before by the batch job, but here note the read only set is set to true and that's how you can attach the same volume to multiple pods in read only mode. So whenever a new replica of the same deployment uh, pops up, it will have access to the model files and it will start really quickly. Next important section in deployment is obviously containers one. Here I'm running only one container named model and I'm using VLM image from Docker Hub, but if you really care about privacy and the isolation of your Kubernetes containers, you will probably need to download this model into your private registry and deploy it from there. And I'm invoking one comment in the VLM container to expose my model as an API in the OpenAI format. So the format used to query your model using HTTP API will be the same that is used by OpenAI. And I'm specifying the model to be the Mistral 7B instruct from slash model. And the same principle here, I'm using volume mounts to mount my shared volume to this container. Next few params are related to the scalability and to the model itself. Since I'm running the model on L4 GPUs, they, those GPUs support bfloat 16 format and this model is natively saved in such format. That's why I'm using it here. You can specify the seed and max context length for your, for your model. Again, this is something really bound to the GPUs that you are using. So if you are using more powerful GPUs, you will probably uh, be able to put, put larger context length here. And as for resources, I'm requesting seven CPUs, 32 gigabytes of memory, which is more than enough, and one GPU, which in my case will be the NVIDIA L4. The default port that the VLM is running is port 8000, and that's basically it for the, for the deployment definition. We are good to deploy it. So in order to do this, just type in kubectl apply and point to this file. As you can see, my deployment is already running. So the final thing is to create a service for that. And here you can see simple manifest that will create a cluster IP service for my deployment uh, based on selector Mistral 7B instruct, and it will expose port 8000 to my internal Kubernetes cluster. Step five, querying the model. The model is already deployed and it's good to go, so let's query it. So as you can see, my Mistral 7B model is already running in one of the pods. Let's see the services that we have. There's also a Mistral 7B service, so we can now port forward to the service. I am binding my local port 8000 to port 8000 in the service, which will be directed directly to the pod. And let's open another tab here and send some requests. So the requests have the following format. So you need to specify the model the prompt that you will sending to the model, maximal number of tokens that you want the model to return, and the temperature, which is a parameter related to how stable the responses are. The lower the temperature, the more the more stable the responses will be. And the format for Mistral uh, 7B model is the following. So you need to start your prompt with a start token. And then since this is an instruction model, uh, you specify the instruction uh, in those uh, special tags inst and you end up your instruction with the closing tag for instruction and then the model will basically answer you can chat with it so let's send this uh, request to our model and there's one more thing in the request there's this uh, model key that points to some path and you might wonder where does this path comes from so when you open the browser and go to the port 8000 or local machine that is 
pointing to the deployment and go to v1 slash models you will see a json file that points to all of the models that are deployed within this instance of vllm right now for us it's only one model and it has id pointing to the actual path of our model so this is the place where you obtain the model string that you attach to all of the requests the default endpoint that you query in order to get responses from your model is slash v1 slash completions so let's send a request for that remember to also send a content type uh, header because the server expects json inputs and when we query the model with the prompt who is james hatfield provide forward answer it answers with lead singer guitarist of metallica and since mistral is an instruct model you can use it in chat and in workflows such as retrieval augmented generation you can provide it with some prompt and then ask it to for example summarize something or extract some relevant information or answer your question so let's see if it works so let's open for example our getting data blog i'll scroll down to one of the recent blog posts and let's see whether we can actually extract some information from it so for example here we have some challenges related to uh, real-time trading platform let's copy over a paragraph and let's paste it here and the instruction here is to uh, list all of the challenges from the text that i just pasted and being concise so let's run the script and as you can see it really quickly responded with the extracted information so now you can play it on your own private environment in your kubernetes cluster and build your new large language model application on top of the open source models. Now that the model is working, it's best time to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this one. Make sure to check out our blog and if you are interested in free MLOps consultation, drop us a line in the form linked below. That's all for today. You now know how to deploy private large language models in your Kubernetes cluster in five simple steps and see you in the next one. Bye.